Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. She's out and about today, but hopefully we'll get her back later tonight or tomorrow morning for videos. But we're going to talk about Disney stock. A lot of people talking about Disney stock in terms of its uh, uh, huge drop off in the last couple of months. Now it has rebounded a little bit, but it's still not doing not doing very good. And even some investing sites are saying, hey, it might be time to, to kiss Disney stock goodbye. It might be time to just divest yourself of Disney um, because it's sideways. It's just, it's, it's flatlined. The stock is absolutely flatlined and I don't know if it's gonna get better, especially coming into a recession. Uh, Disney is a luxury item. Theme parks especially are a luxury item. And you know we're talking about Disney Plus and they're banking on Disney Plus to uh, you know get them through. Everybody's everybody's looking at Netflix. They're looking at Netflix to see what uh, you know what's going to happen with streaming because it, it seems like we, we're heading into like a uh, streaming apocalypse, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of shows getting canceled. A lot of companies that bet heavily on streaming are actually pulling back on their content spend, including Netflix and Disney Plus might be sitting on what is described as a ticking time bomb. I had a friend send this over the other day. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Cricket could actually, Cricket, the sport of Cricket, not Cricket, the cell phone company, and not Jiminy Cricket, but Cricket could actually help tank Disney Plus because they're betting heavily on India. Uh, Cricket apparently is huge in India, who knew? And uh, they might not be willing to pay for the rights to that. We're, we're gonna talk about this uh, situation with Disney stock kissing Mickey Mouse goodbye. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 269,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk a lot about Disney having worked in and around the company for a number of years, different capacities. No, we didn't get fired from Disney. I actually walked away from Disney. I was a contractor. Uh, and I am also a Disney stockholder. I actually have quite a bit of Disney stock and it's uh, painful <laughs> it's painful to see all of my gains wiped out. That Disney stock is not doing well. I thought I was making a pretty smart decision hanging on to it. I think, you know, thinking to myself, well, after the pandemic, everything's going to gonna go up and up and up probably. And I'll cash out when I feel good and ready to cash out. And uh, yeah, uh, it kind of hurts. It's kind of hurting. So let's talk about this. Uh, seeking Alpha. Disney, goodbye Mickey Mouse. Despite the stellar growth in subscription for Disney Plus, we're going to talk about that because that might be a problem. Uh, Diz stock remained on sideways action post first quarter uh, 2022 earnings. It's evident that macro headwinds are still against the stock, especially worsened by it's increasingly viewed as a streaming company. So that's interesting that everybody's starting to look at Disney as being another Netflix or basically Netflix with a theme park, Netflix with more merchandise, Netflix with uh, occasional theatrical releases. As a result, we may have to bid its stock recovery goodbye for now, uh, though reversal could happen by 2023. Yeah, so this is not a good sign. Um, this is not a good sign that they're basically like, yeah, it might be time to ditch Disney. You know, should you buy Disney, given its IP moat? In current undervaluation, consensus estimates rate Diz as a decent buy with an eventual price target of 147.35. Nonetheless, given the multiple headwinds plaguing the stock, we expect further retracements in the short term despite the stellar subscription growth for Disney Plus uh, and the fantastic performance of the domestic theme parks. Therefore, we encourage investors to wait for further clarification and potential retracement before adding it to their por portfolio. Uh, might be time to ditch Disney. I don't know. Um, right now, if you bought Disney within the last couple of years and you sell it, you're probably going to lose money. Uh, I'm not losing money, but uh, I certainly do not have the money in Disney stock that I had just a couple months ago. So this is this is kind of interesting. Again, this is a, a friend of mine sent this over. And look, Disney's got a lot of things going on right now, a lot of uh, backlash uh, for various political reasons, uh, people may be boycotting Disney or whatever. Uh, I think economics are going to play heavily into it because the theme park revenue historically has been their big moneymaker. And people, frankly, aren't going to have the money to travel. Uh, they're not. The gas prices and the airlines, all the prices are going up. And Disney themselves are gouging, gouging people. They're gouging people. Uh, here we have another article. 
Is Disney a bet worth taking after the stock's 30% decline? Ouch, ouch. Anyway, let's talk about this ticking, ticking time bomb. Uh, Disney Plus subscriber numbers have been a source of optimism in the industry, increasing every quarter while Netflix grabs the headlines for missing estimates. Well, yeah, and there's there's a lot behind that. Hot Star is, look at this, Hot Star is like a third, more than a third of their subscribers. So keep this in mind. This is India. This is why I think we had a Bollywood number in the Eternals. Uh, this success is due in part to a decision that has the potential to backfire on par with Netflix's recent stock tribulations. Uh-oh. Some 36% of Disney's subscribers are actually subscribers of a different service. Disney Plus Hotstar, which existed in India prior to Disney Plus and was rebranded with Disney Plus content added to give the main service a big boost in sub numbers. By folding Hotstar into Disney Plus and then being able to claim a total Disney Plus subscribers uh, claim the total Disney Plus subscribers as the larger figure, Disney succumbed to the pressure of demonstrating that its streaming service could com- uh, be competitive with Netflix. So basically, what Disney is doing is they took the Hotstar subscribers and they said, oh, look, all these existing Hotstar subscribers, they're Disney Plus subscribers to pad the numbers. They did this with Hulu, too. Yeah, this is a trick. This is what they're doing. They did it with Hulu, too. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to force every Hulu subscriber to subscribe to Disney Plus, and then we can say, look, we got a whole bunch of new Disney Plus subscribers. But the reality is, is they're just pushing people pushing people around. They're not actually picking up a whole lot of new subscribers because I think we've hit a ceiling on streaming services in general. Basically, everybody who wants to pay for streaming is paying for streaming. Uh, Disney content is not the core driver for hot star subscriptions, so this is very important. That would be the streaming rights for the Indian Premier League, a massively popular domestic cricket league. Cricket. For U.S. equivalent, imagine if Hulu held exclusive NFL streaming rights for all games. Uh, In the latest reported figures, the calendar for the calendar period of of Q1 2022, there was little difference in monthly ARPU for Disney Plus users uh, located in the U.S. and Canada versus the rest of the world. The figure for Hotstar is 76 cents. Yeah, it's cheaper for Hotstar. Uh, Eight times smaller than international figures like sports rights in the U.S. IPL rights are very expensive in the local market with a base price for the total rights package set at $4.2 billion. It could very well end up being a lot more expensive than that. Up for auction beginning June 12th, these rights cover 2023 to 2027. So it's possible Disney doesn't pay the $4.2 billion for cricket and they lose hot stars, what they're saying. Sony and Amazon are among the companies registering their interest in bidding, but it's not hard to imagine any major global player looking at this as a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to substantially ratchet up their own global tallies. It's not a given that Disney will overspend to maintain the IPL on Hotstar. Uh, in the company's latest quarterly earnings call, Bob Chapek said the company would be cutting content spent. Though he didn't specify whether that would apply to IPL, Chapek also noted on the call he was confident Disney Plus would achieve its ultimate subscriber growth of $230 million to $260 million by September 2024, with or without Hotstar maintaining its rights. Uh, Chapek's comments effectively place Disney in a difficult position that exposes the vulnerability of its stock. If Disney pays up to keep IPL on Hotstar, any such outlay will negatively impact the already low ARPU and be unfavorably viewed by investors. So to keep the 76 cent subscribers, we're going to spend $4.2 billion. Or we could take that money and uh, put it toward content that our six, seven dollar a person subscribers want. You know what I'm saying? Disney doesn't pay for IPL. It raises the possibility of losing between 20 and 30 million global subs for Disney Plus from cricket fans canceling Hotstar, a development that could trigger a serious stock dip. Uh Uh-oh. Chapek also contended that Disney has built out Hotstar's local programming enough to mitigate the impact of losing IPL, but that's a nuance Wall Street won't appreciate. Ultimately, what Disney does here could be a test of whether investors truly value profitability over sheer subscriber volume, and that may be a tall order given the dramatic drop Disney Plus could experience in its subscriber base. At least Netflix had a legitimate reason for its subscriber count falling, uh, they said, because of Russia. It's not just Russia. A lot of people canceled Netflix because they kept jacking the prices up and they're going to start charging people, um, you know, for... Uh, you know, account sharing and all this other stuff. Uh, Disney's own stock has been down 25% in the last three months. 
coming to rest at 108 last Friday. As of today, it's 106. Not good. Losing IPL would shake investor confidence in Disney's ability to hit the $230, $260 million target Chapek reiterated earlier this year. Damage control will be paramount for the company. To reassure the market that the long-term projection is still reachable, but the damage done to the short-term stock price could be considerable. So we're looking at a Netflix-like disaster if they do not spend the money to keep cricket in India. Is basically what they're saying. So this is a problem um, for Disney because Disney is already in a bad place. We have a recession coming. So people aren't going to spend money as much on the theme parks, I don't think. They might be able to get more money out of individual users that go, but eventually people are going to feel the pinch. And there are, look, the parks are packed right now. But if the recession uh, comes, people are not going to have that extra money to go to the theme parks. They might start cutting their spend on things like Disney Plus here in the States too. And then if they lose India, well, they're really in trouble. So I don't know, guys. Uh, this is this is what happens. But the fact of the matter is, is that the stock market is viewing, investors are viewing Disney as uh, being a Netflix competitor now and not a, a movie studio per se and not a, uh, not a theme park giant, but a, a streaming service. So they're just going to look at the numbers, the number of subs. Uh, it's going to be really interesting going forward to see what happens. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.